Schaefer. Uh, Howard Stern will be here, Polina Podoskova, and uh, the Blue Man Group. They have a spectacular thing planned here at the end. I haven't seen it because we can only do it once. It's so spectacular. We couldn't even rehearse it. That's how big it is. Uh, you know, we have had a great week here. Boy, people are just... You know, one thing about New Yorkers, when they hate you, they hate you. When they love you, they love you. And the other night we were driving around filming something just on the street in this big Cadillac. And this lady came up to the car who was, I, I guess, a fan. We had the cameras on. Take a look at this. this, uh, this My first cast has a little radio program that airs weekday mornings all across our land. Uh, critics call him a shock jock. He calls himself the king of all media. We call him Howard Stern, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of morons in the audience today. Is that right? Yeah! I can't imagine why. It's the first crowd like that we've had all week. Really? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. No, you know, I felt bad for you when I watched, uh, you know, Letterman came out. Letterman comes out. <laughs> comes out and Jay doesn't want to admit it but it really hurt him I know it did I what mean I think the whole, the whole audience agrees that Jay had a really bad time of it Letterman came out <laughs> and of course Johnny of course King Johnny decides to kiss Letterman on the air and hug him right and you got to figure that hurts you right Jay true or false it hurts you be honest you win some bit. you lose some you win some you lose some so I felt kind of bad so I figured well maybe I'll dress up a little bit as Johnny and give Jay a hug of course you had that old fossil Jack Parr come out here and give you a hug <laughs> There's a guy, there's a guy I can't figure out. Here's a guy who had the Tonight Show, right? I mean, what else did he have to do but come out and sit on a stool and talk for an hour That's and have a couple of guests? That's all there is to it. That's you, all there is to it. You show up at 5 it, for, it and you're out of here at 6. It doesn't look that hard to me when Jack Parr especially did it. And suddenly he had to leave. There was pressure on him. He had to leave. He couldn't take it. So now he sits in Connecticut, sitting at home, waiting for your phone calls. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but I'll tell you about Johnny. You won't say it, Jay. You need me here, Howard? No, I, I don't really need yet. you. I'll say it. You're just talking now. No, I you just got to say... You have to learn say... the art of conversation. All right. Conversing. All right, you're absolutely and, and right. The, I probably should, should be... You should take off the sunglasses. Take off the sunglasses? Don't you there you go. There you go. Okay. There you go. And now these are pretty... Those are nice, aren't they? Well... You know, I even noticed... I mean, these are old. I even noticed that you changed your image for New York. You're wearing a... What is this, a dicky? <laughs> what is that? Is that a... What do, you, do you think I'm going to look down so you can go like that? Isn't no, that no, what no, what, no, what is that? Seriously, what? Uh, why this? This uh, is the, uh, This is a dicky. That is the New York You look. think I'm going to look down so you can go like right, that? Right. You this are is, so stupid. That this is, is the, the New York, this is the New York, Jay, is it not? Yeah, we have a different look. We have a different set. We it's very nice. I'm happy week. for you that you're here in New York. I thought that Johnny was really out of place. He worked on The Tonight Show for 30 years. <laughs> These are prescriptions. You gotta let me be the hatchet man here. These are prescriptions. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. I have to see with those. What do you uh, get? Do you get like a, a thing, free thing of Boone's Farm wine? You get this? Are you un are you uncomfortable with me talking about uh, Johnny? You can talk about whatever. Have I ever told you what to talk about? Not no, you never you have. I just said, like, don't other shows make you go over a list of notes? And no, you can't I know you're trying it? desperately to get in favor with Johnny, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't think it makes or breaks this show. You know, Howard, after show. tonight, I don't think anyone in show business will ever speak to me again. No, I think they will. <laughs> I think it, I don't really think it matters if Johnny comes on this show or not. I don't think it's going to make or break the Tonight Show, quite frankly. Do you agree, Bradford? Absolutely. No big deal. Look at Bradford. Is that the best job in show business or what? You get to sit on a chair and watch Jay do his thing for an hour. It's beautiful. It really is. And that's another job. He committed five and this. 
No prep, right, Branford? None. No, no work on it. Easy, easy. No, game. I actually love Branford. I think he is an excellent role model. I told him this on my radio oh, show. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait a second. There's a lot of, there are a lot of black guys out there who have been feeling hostile to the white man. We Here see we this go. in our society. I can't imagine what white men they're feeling hostile to. I, I don't know. <laughs> Branford knows what I'm talking about. And he is a brother, I think, who I, if I may address all black people watching The Tonight if Show. If anyone can speak for black people, I think it's you. <laughs> I think Bramford makes an excellent role model that I think all black brothers should uh, maintain an appearance like Bramford and act like Bramford. Bramford's very friendly. I go backstage, he hugs me, he's a nice guy. Uh -huh. I like that kind of thing. He has no hatred of the white man, do you, Bramford? You love the white man, don't you? <laughs> blow, it, blow it out your ass, Howard. <laughs> You're taking it the wrong way. You're taking it the wrong way. I'm you not, really man. are. I really think you're an excellent role model, better than Farrakhan or any of these other guys. I really do, Jay. Thank you, Governor. Sinbad looks like a cannibal compared to you. He's wild. <laughs> you are the best guy in the whole world. And that's all I want to say, Jay. Hey, that's all you're going to say? Yeah, good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, right. everybody. Thank so, you. Now, let me ask you some questions. Go ahead. Thank you, Bramford. All right, now the running for governor. Thing. What is that? We take a break? Uh, oh, we're we're going to take... get a word in. We'll take a break. More with Howard. Be right back right after. I'm going to do a costume take. to do some costume change. Am I supposed to introduce them again? Uh, Howard, are you ready? Come on, what kind of costume change? Well, I just thought I'd change outfits, Jay. <laughs> so, I, so I used to watch the Academy Awards. Angela Lansbury would do nine different costume changes. I'd sit there, I'd say, why the hell is Angela Lansbury changing dresses? I really don't care if they see Angela Lansbury at all, but right. let alone in a different outfit. So I thought I'd add a little glamour to the Tonight Show now that it's You know, that is so different from what you just had on 10 minutes. Is it really? Look any different. You really don't feel I, it looks no, different? No, I don't think, I don't think any of these people would, if I hadn't said anything, I don't think they noticed. Well, I'll be changing throughout the show, you know, oh, I really oh, got oh, into it. Oh, 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 lucky. Now, yeah. now, I need to ask you about this governor thing. I Publicity did, stunt, Howard? No, a lot of people think it's a disc jockey uh, act or stunt Come on. running for governor. I promise you that it is not. I am dead serious. I mean, I feel I should be governor of New York State, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, I'm sitting with about 12% of the vote, believe it or not. Now, really? Now, where do you yeah. get these statistics? The Harris Poll. They did a survey of New York State people, and they is said... Robin this is Robin Harris? No, this is, not, this is not Robert Harris. This is the Harris-Harris Poll, and no. they say I'm about 12% right now. And the reason 12%, why... 12%? That's pretty good. I think I have a good campaign platform. I have announced as a candidate, I took the Libertarian nomination, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the reason I think I got the nomination is simple. I have a three-point platform. Number one, I recognize right off the bat that I am not qualified to be governor for more than two or three weeks. Thank you. I, I must say, your folks certainly agree with you. Yes, I can't run the, uh, I can't run the, you know, the governor's office. Yeah. I really can't. I don't think I'm capable. I don't have a math background. I don't know that I could balance a budget. But I could bring to New York State the death penalty. Yeah. Are you for the death penalty? Yeah. You know, are you for the death penalty? You don't think there are enough people getting killed in New York as it is? Well, no, I think a few more <laughs> might be uh, applicable. But, no, seriously, are you for the death penalty? Uh, it's an issue I would have to study. You're know. kidding. You, uh, you're, Jay's like running for president. No, no, no. I mean, no, Jay, it's a, it's a are you for it or against it? You must have some thoughts on it. I think in certain instances, yes. Yeah, you're for it, right? Maybe if a member of your family was killed, you want the death penalty. So if, I, if you yourself right, so were, were I for... Right. Yeah. No, I would don't say, be hostile. No. So I decided to run based on you're that. You're based on that. And That's right. But somehow death penalties and potholes in the street, aren't those the two issues? Those yeah. And somehow those seem said, far apart. It really annoys me when I drive around in New York. Yeah. I find that these potholes exist. I find that they're doing construction for two or three years on the same pothole, and I can't get into work. So I said what I would do is... Hold it a second. Oh, thank you. I take the Long Island Expressway into work every day. And as I'm driving along on this Long Island Expressway, I see these guys out there in the middle of the afternoon doing construction. I would make all road construction happen at night mm -hmm. so that I could get to work when I have to do a job. All I want to do is get to work. That's the most important Maybe thing. Maybe these convicted killers should be put in the potholes and people could just, this way you would solve That is an idea. Solve two issues at once. 
You're saying we fry them and then fill the potholes with them. Well, I have some other issues here for you. You're a good no, man. No. And by the way, my lieutenant governor is somewhere in the audience. Uh, this is the guy who's going to take over for me. I'm going to resign after two weeks. That guy, stand, stand up, Stan. For God's sakes, do what I say or I'm not going to make you lieutenant governor. That's the lieutenant governor? Yeah, that guy out there is lieutenant governor. I don't know if you can see him. He will take over for well, me. Let me ask you about some of the issues. Would you legalize prostitution? Yeah, well, no, I won't do any of that stuff. Oh, I will no. just bring us the death penalty. I will step down and then stand walk and we'll oh, run uh, the government. So none of these others? No, I don't know anything. I have no idea if I would legalize prostitution. More or not. cops on the street? More cops? No, no, I, I, I don't even know how to get that done. I wouldn't even know how to do it. But now, don't you have to give up your radio show to run for uh... Well, that's what I'm working on. I got to find some kind of scam. I'm for loopholes. That's another thing I'm for. So you're for the loopholes? I'm for the loopholes. I got to find a loophole. You know, you're not allowed to do a radio show and run for the That's governor of That's what I mean. So how can you run for governor now? Well, I'll find a way. Believe me. They don't call me uh, the king of all sleaze for nothing. I will find a sleazy way around this kind of thing. I have a big announcement to make on your show. Announcement? What is I am very excited to say this. I know I have a lot of fans around the country, mm -hmm. and people will be excited to learn. Are you ready? Yeah. Give me a drum roll, for God's sakes. Branford, do something. Thank you. Well, big announcement. Go ahead. Uh, I have uh, signed a movie deal to make my book, my number one selling book, Private Parts, into a major feature film. Uh, who, uh... Thank you. Mr. Howard. Thank you. Hey, Jay, don't lay on my parade. Let the audience applaud. Who is, it, who is the book deal? Who, who is it with? Well, let me tell you what happened. I had, you know, after the book... You, could, you know, the last time you were here, now all due respect, Todd, it's wonderful. Go ahead. But the last time you were here, you announced two movie deals and yes. a possible talk show. I, that's right. And... No, I never announced a possible talk show. People were talking to me about doing a talk show, and I told you that, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, if the oh, money was right, the whole thing, you know. Believe right. me, so just this mellow is, out. So this is set in stone. This is set in stone. The contracts were signed this week. I would what not studio? come on what here. What studio? Let me tell you all about it. I right. met with 10 different studios. Everyone was excited about this book. Right. I sat down with a guy named David Kirkpatrick. You know who he is? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, you're not in the film business. So. No. You wouldn't know about such things. You just do television. Right, right. No, I met with this guy. He was the uh, former head of uh, Disney Studios and the Paramount Studios. Former head? So he must have yeah, screwed he, up. No, he went away and he, <laughs> they no, started he a went film away? company. Why would a former head just go away? Listen to me. Would you stop it? This is a big deal. They started a film company called Reicher. It is a uh, new film studio. and they Reicher? Uh, that's right. They bought the rights to my book. And they are going to make this into a major motion picture with a major budget the whole time. Now, deal. who will play you? Who will play me? I will play me. What do you think? I'm going to do this so, so someone else will play me? Oh, so you will... I will play me. It'll be the life of Howard Stern. Is this going to be one of like those Melissa and Joan Rivers things where you... Uh, no, it won't be like Melissa and Joan Rivers, for God's sake. You think I'm going to humiliate myself like that on television? <laughs> I don't know what's with Joan Rivers. I mean, who, who the hell's going to watch that? I, told, I said that to Joan. What is that? I said, Ed, how many times are you going to dig up Edgar and pick through those bones? Sake, she should be oh, seriously. I now, will it be, let me ask you something else. Now, a movie... You can't pick through Edgar's bones, for God's sakes. The man is laying in the grave. Now, Joan Howard. is dating 40-year-old guys, and poor Edgar's laying there like a cod, spinning in his grave. Now, Howard, let me ask you this. Hey, what about Joan Rivers, let me, let me Would back you up. Joan Rivers on the Tonight back up, Show? Back up, back up, back you know, up. Johnny Ben... Yeah, never mind, back up. No, no, I want to know more about the movie. I'm talking about your project. This is you. Oh, the that's more important. You. All right, never mind, Joan Rivers. <laughs> Go ahead. What about right, now, what do you need to know? For a movie like this to be popular, it'd probably, yes. probably be R-rated because of language. We don't know that yet. Well, it's got to have some sex in it, but you don't have any sex. No, I don't have sex with my wife, but there will be fantasy scenes, Jay. Oh. <laughs> fantasy lesbian scenes. I can see it all now. Me in bed, two, three girls at the same time. I you see. must, you, you must uh, be under the same circumstance I am. You've been married to Mavis for how long now? Uh, 14 years. 14 years. How long have you been married? I've been married, uh, I've been with uh, Allison, my beautiful wife, and she is a lovely woman, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I love yeah. her very much, but my hands are starting to shake. Yeah. Uh, she, no, it's, uh, I've been married 16 years, 16. and four years we dated. So I have been a monogamous for 20, 20 years. years. That's very good. And you know when you get, thank you. And you know that I'm not a particularly handsome guy. You know, uh, I know that as well as I know, you know yeah. that as well as that. You're up close. So who stars in your fantasies? Who, what actresses do you want to have in these scenes? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm glad I'm on the show tonight. I would like to have Paulina, Paulina who is on the show. <laughs> who I hope will be wearing a mini outfit. Will I be allowed to sit here while Paulina sits here? Yes, yes, yes. It's unbelievable. I was looking at her husband. I'm a better looking guy than him. He's the guy in the car. 
I'm a much more handsome guy. I really am. Yeah. So you, you would like her for one of the He's scenes. as pale as a ghost. I saw yeah. him back there. Right. People that live in glass houses. Yeah, right. I know. Well, come on. I got a little son. But no, I uh, I would like to have some beautiful women in this. Beautiful women, yeah. You know, different strippers and things like that. But you, right. you know what I'm talking about. You never fantasize about other women as the host of The Tonight Show, now that you have this incredible success. You don't find at times that some of the beautiful camera women that work on the show or some of the people you don't want to have you don't want to have sex with them no no <laughs> frank would you believe that no i think <laughs> out here and see if she will star in Oh, that. Paulina's coming out now in the middle of my segment? No, no, we'll, when they come back. When, when we, we come, come back, back when Paulina we come will back, come we'll bring her on. We'll All right, that's exciting. Be right back. We'll find sure. out if she will do this. Will she do it? My next guest. She's a wildly successful model, actress, and children. Will I be able to hug her hello? Will she be offended you by that? Can say hello. Please say uh, hello and welcome to the very brave Polina Podeskova. <laughs> Well, nice to have you here. Well, thank you very much. Now, would you, uh, you heard, no, I, I, I slipped him a dollar to get lost. Go. It didn't work. You are beautiful, I gotta say. I never understood how Rick got you from the cars. Do you ever see Rick O'Casey from the cars? I mean, a great talent. Don't get me wrong, Paulina. <laughs> he, he is a great talent. I love his music. You know what I'm saying? But what happened? After we married you, he disappeared. I think you're killing the guy. I don't know what's going on. He lost the edge, maybe, or something. Well, you know, I don't know. I, uh, oh. I think uh, even a great, even a great artist doesn't uh, produce masterpieces every day. But did anybody ever tell you that you look remarkably similar? I you look, do like look Rick similar a lot. Yeah. So you're attracted you to me? Yes. You are. You are. Yeah. Now, Paulina, Paulina, would you do? Would you do his movie? Well, of course uh, she would. Well, which part? No, I would say you would play my wife. You look amazingly like her. <laughs> I gotta say, you have the most beautiful legs. Thank you. The most I... beautiful legs and everything. Yeah. My God. And you had a baby, right? I had a Look baby. Look at the body on you. Thank you. Well, I'm actually pulling my stomach in right, right now. No, you're not. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Woman should look like this, right, Jay? Yes. yes. Really? Very, very attractive. Lovely. Mavis. Lovely woman. That's Lovely right. Woman. Thank Beautiful. You very Lo much. Lovely woman. I actually did come on this show knowing fully well I was going to be sandwiched between Howard and Blue Men Group, both which I think are very essential parts of New York. Oh, yeah. how does Rick, but how did Rick get you? I don't understand. What did he do? Did you marry him for his money? Was that it? Because you were making Howard, a good living on I your own. I married him for his looks. You married him for his looks? I married him for his looks. I okay. love there you go, the huh? kind of hold a it, look. Hold it, hold it, I gotta sneeze. Why? <laughs> but I know, because I look Howard, like you Rick. Should feel good. That's right, you should feel good. That means there's hope I for people you like you. I think you're very attractive, especially now sitting, you know, close but, up. But your, your husband personal not, question? but your husband is not as old as Howard. I'm no, sure. No, yeah. we're about the same age. No, I think no, your husband is young. Yeah, you're, you're 40 now, right? Yeah, I'm 40. That's not 100 Ooh, years old. Man. Yeah, I know. And you, yeah, but you've also got... Prescription glasses. You also got a dickie on, okay? <laughs> and Howard, Howard, let me ask you something else. And Paulina, you can tell me. Look at him. Has he got that just for men hair coloring stuff? Because that's look, no, look. there's no. Yes, hair it is. I, oh, I, yes, I, it, I like oh, hair yes, color. it is. Look. I hope it is. Because look, it I like is hair, hair color. color. It is. Can I ask a question. Really Howard, it is hair coloring. Look, he won't answer. Look no, right in that camera no, and I say, I, I, I swear to God. I swear to God, I don't color. Jay, would you leave me alone? You're mad. of going 
going up against Letterman is getting to you. You're acting like a crazy man. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm curious, though, when you see a beautiful model like this, this is a beautiful woman. This is this is like the upper one percent echelon of women. I walk through the streets all day. You don't see this walking around. When a guy well, like Rick, bad begins, eyes but was. when a guy like Rick dates you, does he? And if I'm out of line here, you stop me. Does he get to? <laughs> Does he get to sleep with you right away, or does he have to, like, court you for a very long time? Go ahead, you handle that. I'm gonna do a costume change while you in. You mean I get to speak? Go ahead, answer hey. the question. I'll How change are outfits. Uh, you got, are you changing outfits right now, Howard? Yeah, like Andrew Lansbury. Okay, okay. just said right away, Rick has got you beat. Oh, yeah? You're not supposed to keep the camera on me while I change. I'm oh, all right. I'll change. I'm sorry. Paul. I got a good outfit coming up. Huh? Go ahead, answer go the question. Does, Paulina, does Rick get to sleep with you right away? Uh, yes. He does? Yes, You he went does. to bed with him the first night? Well, no, but shortly after. And you don't think of other men? I mean, all the good-looking guys you hung around with, you don't think of other guys? I See, uh, Howard, I happen to find my husband extremely attractive. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back right after this. Uh, my next guests are a trio of performance artists who have been with us three times before. USA Today calls this show, which has been playing to sold-out crowds for over two years here now, the goofiest, most inventive theater to come along in ages. We couldn't leave New York without showing what everybody is talking about. Direct from the Astor Place Theater, please welcome Blue Man Group.
I want to thank my guests, Pauline Fortis Goldberg, and of course, uh, Howard. Thank you, Howard, for coming. Hey, I'm glad I came. Uh, Paulina says she probably will do my movie. Oh, I'm, wonderful. I'm auditioning very good her. We got a practice the Blue scene. Man Group. Okay. And of course, I want to thank uh, the city of New York and the wonderful crew and all the help we got here. Thanks, folks. And of course, Brad